Well, there you go. Put the toy car back in the toy box and we'll put the Play-Doh back in the toy box, can't we? Well, just had a week in Italy. Um, various car things. I used to get out there a couple of times a year, but then this pandemic happened and, well, you know, none of us got to do anything, did we, for a bit. So this has been my first trip out there, um, first trip out the country. And, uh, you know, it's all right, it's all right. Luckily avoided all the chaos at the airports. Um, all the other flights around me seemed to be cancelled, so someone, someone was looking out for me and it was all right, yeah. So, a bit of time with my mate at the lake, uh, wonderful. Uh, see his new place and what he's done to it. He bought it during lockdown and had a lot of work to do on it, um, which as he was locked down, he was able to get on with. So that was lovely. And then we did plenty of car stuff, which I'll probably bore you with. <laughs> you can look at my holiday snaps. But we were concentrating on this Fiat 500 and the brakes. So we picked back up on that. You know, it's, uh, yeah, I might have, um, it might have been on the day, but I'm back to it now. So if you remember, we were having this problem where these was knocking and it was clipping on here. They see these shiny bits where it's been hitting. And that was where the adjuster, the clutch adjuster on, on the shoe was knocking on it. So I've replaced all of it because I wasn't happy with it. And I thought well, the best thing to do is start, start at the beginning with that and see what we've got. So I think we should have a look at that and, you know, see how it's behaving. Right. right, so we've got new drums, hub nuts obviously, new wheel bearings, and a set of shoes in there. Now, what we were doing was having a look at all this business, how it all fitted together and what was going on and, you know, all these where it's hitting and so on. So we want to make sure that's all right. So yeah, we've got, we've got different construction to the inside of these with more ribs on them, which is going to be stronger. And they also, you know, seem to be good they seem to be away from these adjusters so this is the slightly different style of adjuster these are the riveted on ones that not the um, ones with circlips and so on but we want to make sure that's all right and it's not making any contact with anything so we need to work out so we need to measure them and we need to measure there and see what's going on and it's also quite nice to know where the shoes are sitting here where, where they're running you know how close they run to here so we've got to sort that out some way now at the minute, I haven't got any grease in, the, in with the bearing just because of taking it on and off. So I've got to work out how to do that. And, you know, it's various ways of doing it. You can take lots of measurements. It'd be right difficult thing to set up and do. So the way I do it is I, um, seeing as we're working on a toy car, <laughs> we use some Play-Doh. But this, this is just the right, just the right stuff. So pinched this off my daughter many years ago. Uh, and I use this quite a bit in the engine building. But yeah, what we do, we put some of that on there. We squeeze some of this on here. And then we can see what we got, can't we? So pop them on there. And then we'll know what sort of clearance we got. So if we do that, so we're worried about them knocking. So we, we've got some of that on there. We'll see what it looks like. So pop this back on and then we can see Get it back down. The inner bearing's already on there, the inner race. Pop the outside on. Now remember this is the one with the opposite, opposite thread, this side. So normally you do up clockwise, but on this it's anti-clockwise to do up. So we just bed that in, nip that up tight so that it's seated. There you go, it's tight, it's seated. We know it's all right. And then just give it a bit of a turn around, see if it's see what's going on. We can see what's knocking, what's happening, what it does to that Play-Doh. So there we go. That's that bit. Let's see what we got. Now we don't want these bearings falling on the dirt, do we? So we'll be a bit careful with these. Right, so it's made a little mark on that one hardly touch that one so we can safely say you know they're not in contact are they they're not going to be touching are they look how thick that is that you know so we, we're not going to have that touching that's far enough away from there if we pull that apart you can see how thick it is you know we've got enough room there they ain't going to knock so we know that's all right so we're happy with that bit which is useful 
So the only other thing I wanted to check, wasn't it? I said I would like to see, um, it would be worth seeing how close it runs to this edge. How close would you be that edge of the shoe? How close it is to there? Just because we don't want it rubbing on there and so on. I just want to make sure. So whilst we're doing that, we'll, we'll, we'll test that. So we can do the same sort of thing with that, can't we? We can pull a bit of this out, put it in here like that. Now you can use this, you know, decent, you know, if you're do building engines, you can use a bit of this on top of the piston to see how, you know, check your valve overlap and things like that, which is what I normally do on engine builds and various things. But you know, it, 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 it's actually quite a useful trick. So yeah, so we'll pop that on there and we'll seat it again and see what we got. So there you go, that's seated. We won't turn it over at this time because I just want to see the witness mark it leaves in there. I don't want to sort of, if I turn it over, it'll all sort of pull it around it, and mess it up. It'll end up everywhere. There you go. Right, there you go. So that's just nipped it up. So we know that's, that's about where it's going to sit. Um, and let's see what we got. Right, so you can see it's left marks on it, hasn't it? So we've left the mark there. You can see that is like that bit there. So we know we've, we've got an impression there of where they're sitting. And again, that one. So we've got an impression of where the shoes are sitting. So we'll put it up on the bench and have a proper look at this. So we know exactly what we're dealing with. And then we can see. So what have we got? If I cut into this with the scalpel, and then we can see sort of what depth we got. So there you go, cut through that, and then I can lift that bit off, lift that out, and there we can see what we got. So there you go, that's how much clearance we got. So that's the impression of our shoe, that's the drum, that's, that's what clearance we got off there. So we're fine, aren't we? We're not gonna have a problem with that. So that's nice and easy. We know that's all right. And this is totally unnecessary normally when you're working on stuff, but it's just because we had that problem before, I wanted to make sure we're not engineering a problem in from the start. So there you can see, look, we've got plenty of clearance there. That's, that's the impression of the shoe. That's the impression of the inside of the drum. No problem with clearance. So it, yeah, as I say, it's not something you'd normally worry about doing, but because we'd had issues, I want to make sure we're not dialing them back in. You know, there's no point replacing all this and saying, oh, that'll be all right, because it's all new. Well, what was wrong with the other stuff? Why was it doing it on the other stuff? We don't know. There was something obviously not right with that. So this is a nice little way to make sure we're all right. So we know we are, so we can button it up and put it together. So I'm put some grease in these, um, put the seals back in and off we go. And we got some footage of me using the arbor, pressing the bearings in and so on. So you can just see what's done really. So uh, simple stuff, simple stuff, but, um, and they're fairly simple cars. But that does mean you can end up with issues quite easily, you know, through just assuming things are going to be all right, which is what happens all the time, isn't it? Oh, it's all new, it's going to be all right. Well, it might not be. It might be that new stuff's no good. But yeah, this, this, this old Play-Doh's been valuable. <laughs> yeah, it can't be that old, can it? Because it ain't dried out yet. But it's, uh, it's of a vintage because the girls are growing up now. There we are. They don't miss it now. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Well, there you go. Put the toy car back in the toy box and we'll put the Play-Doh back in the toy box, can't we? Right. Hmm. Let's get some grease in them and assemble it properly, I think. I'm using this just because we've got some, which is, is just a multi-purpose um, high mountain point grease. Uh, this is actually Agip. I know why they changed their name to ENI, I do not know. Why would you change a good brand like Agip? So that's the um, Carney, isn't it? The um, Agip Carney, which is the um, Wolf of Rome, isn't it? With a six-leaded Wolf of Rome, the Carney, which is, um, was, was, the, was the founders of Rome, brothers Remulus and Romulus were, were suckled by the wolf because they were orphans. Close to my heart being an orphan, but there we are. And she covered their legs, uh, she covered them in, in, in uh, mud and hid them underneath her whilst she was suckling them. And the other animals, 
thought that she had six legs and were terrified of her and would, would you know so she protected them like that by hiding them under there and it's a bit of a bit of roman mythology but anyway that's what that's why they use that um i'm sure i'm sure a professor of, <laughs> of this stuff would tell me i'm talking out my ad but there you go um but that's what it is that's where it comes from it's, it is what it comes from and i quite like all that mythology and nonsense you know, being brought up catholic i'm sort of used to a bit of the bit of this sort of stuff, you know, these, these stories and tales and so on. Um, there we are. So, uh, yeah, so we stick it. So you don't have to use this other brands, obviously you can use anything you want within reason, as long as it works. Um, but it's just, I've got this in stock and I thought it'd be a good way to tell you about the, the Ajip Kani, which is a brilliant bit of, um, Product design, you know, that, um, well, product design is the wrong word, but you know, I mean, graphic design, I love that wolf. I think it's great. And you, you see, you know, the posters and the stuff all over the time of the period. See them on the streets, big, big um, billboards and um, tin signs and enamel signs and that of it. It's great. Um, so it's quite evocative of, of all that road racing of the year on the Targa Florian and things like that, or the Melia Melia, uh, all these things. So, um, I quite like it, so it means something to me. And of course they sponsored Ferrari and things, didn't they? So everyone sort of likes it, the Agip thing. So God knows why they changed the name. They didn't change the design, which was good. Thank God for that, eh? uh, But changing that name, I thought was a bit weird, wasn't it? You know, changing your, you know, from something that was so iconic and well known, I don't know. Anyway, not for me to say why they did it. They obviously decided they thought it's the right thing to do. Right, so we'll pop that in, don't we? That, that seal, we want to get that seal in there. Let's get that in. Right. There's our dust seal fitted. Um, our oil seal, but anyway, that's in. Um, bit of grease in here, so we've got a bit of residue in there. Just to keep it nice and then wind a bit into this this bearing so what we're trying to do is, is, is force it in between the bearings you can get a, a tool for for putting on a grease gun that does this that sort of wedges it through them and sort of pumps it through them but i've always found that you end up with it covered in dust from the workshop and end up pumping all the dust and dirt into it so just do it by hand you know do it like this and at least it washes off your hands doesn't it and um and you keep the cap back on your grease and you keep it all nice and clean as long as you don't drop it on the ground. <laughs> the bench is fairly clean, it's all right at the minute. So, it's counterclockwise to do it up. So we do it up, nip it up a bit, and then we'll go back court for turn. So we go up, we go up there, and we'll go back court for turn and see what we got. A bit, bit too much there, isn't it? So we come back a bit. Halfway there. So we want a bit of play in here, but we don't want the wheels wobbling around like that, do we, too much? So let's, let's give it up a bit. So that was tight there. Let's just come off a bit to there, I think. That'll be about right, won't it? Now we're rubbing a little on the shoes, but as we sim, it's not the back plate. It's not rubbing on the edge of there. It's just just rubbing on the surface of it because they're new shoes. So that's another reason why I wanted to do that check that they weren't rubbing on the outside of the drum. You know, which is why we did that. So we know it's not that. So we know it's just a bit of you know they're just pulling a little bit because they've just got a bed in. So we want to peen that over. So we want to use a suitable shape of chisel. To just chase into there and peen that over. They're a bit of a sod to do these, but you know, get it right, it'd be okay. Um, we saw all that, didn't we? Because we looked at it before, didn't we? So I'll just give that round there so I can get onto it. And not always easy if you're left and right handed, is it? Sort of thing. So yeah, I'm going to get it in about the right place. And we'll just try and peen that over. And that'll do, won't it?
Right, that should stop that moving. Yeah, that'll stop it. I might get that. I might just get something a bit blunter on there to push that in more. But that should do us, I think. Right, that should do us, won't it? Well, ain't gonna come off, that'll do. So on with the grease cap and we're done really. And that's that job done just for a road test. So yeah, I reckon um, that'll do for now. <laughs> we'll see what it's like when it's been around the block a couple of times. I'll get these popped on and then we'll um, get it back on its feet and we'll give it a little run. Now you want to be careful with these nut runners with little things like this because you, you know <laughs> it's a bit brutal for them. So we'll just nip them and uh, I'll bar them up properly later when it's on the deck. But yeah, don't um, you can you can do a lot of damage with one of them things by stripping threads and overdoing things. So you've got a little bit of play in there, which is what we want. That will, you know, when they warm up, that will expand them, then you won't get so much of it. But yeah, it should be all right, won't it? At least it rolls nice and free. And yeah, we'll see how it, how it, how it beds in and what they're like when we run it. Now remember these are the pimples that we've got to line them up. I felt we fear it went in for these little pimples and little pegs to put on things. <laughs> it was a scourge to line up. But because they have bolts rather than studs, predominantly on Fiat stuff, you know you're not popping it over the studs, you're popping it over, you know, onto on, on, you know, then you've got to put bolts in, so you've got to start them, so you don't have anything to sort of hang the wheel on, which is why they go in for putting these pimple things in there. But yeah, they can be slightly problematic at the time. They can make it a little bit of a, a menace to line up. Particularly when you're blind and working on, you can't see, you know, can't see it lining up where it's going to go. So yeah, they, they were, um, <laughs> they were a bit of a menace at the time. Uh, and of course, a lot of the sort of racing stuff, our stuff will be, um, on stud conversions, you know, on all the sort of more, um, so what my, how would I explain it? Yeah, the slightly more powerful, um, bigger stuff than these, you know, the stuff that's derived around a Fiat 600 and so on. So that was quite often the way, which makes it a lot easier for mucking around, swapping things over. That's all right, I'm just starting out with this because it was a bit, a little tight by hand and you don't want to go you know if it's cross thread and you wind this on it we'll wreck it so, it was all right. okay get the other side done and then we'll drop her down in a minute
look at the run, see what we got. Like driving a biscuit tin for the angry bees. There you go, that's a little success. I think we'll um, say good night. Thank <laughs> you.